Hey everyone, I'm Zaib Khan and I'm a front-end engineer. In this video, I'm going to show you a simple way to introduce state management into your Angular apps. The NGRX team has recently introduced a package called Component Store. On the face of it, it is meant to manage state at the component level. But with little effort, we can use it to maintain our global application state as well. This makes our code much more readable and maintainable. So let us see how we can add the component store to our apps. I have here a simple contacts app where you can store your list of contacts, search for them, add a new contact, and delete a contact. Oh, and you can also call a contact directly using the phone button. Now this is built without any state management. So let's go through the code a bit. I have here a header component and a contacts component. The header has a title, it has an add button, and it has a search button. For the search and add functions, we need to emit an event because our data is contained in the main component. Then we simply have some handlers in the main component which do the necessary changes in our, in our data. In the contacts component, we take in as input a list of contacts and we send back an event when we delete a contact. This is then handled with the delete contact handler in the main component. Now this is a simple app, but if you have multiple nested components, then you tend to get a lot of events and event handlers, and it can quickly get very messy. With the global store, however, you can avoid this issue entirely. We'll see that in just a bit. Now that we know a bit about our app, we can introduce the component store. First, let's install it with ng-add at ngrx component store latest. Great, let's then create an interface for our contacts data so we can use it throughout our app. We'll create a new folder called models and we'll create a new file called contact.model.ts. We'll define here an interface called contact with just two properties, name and phone. Next, we'll create our global store itself. So we'll create a folder called store and we'll create the contacts.store.ts file inside of it. The first thing we do here is to declare a contact state. So we have an interface called contact state, which would have our contacts. Below this, we'll add an injectable decorator and create a new class for our store, calling it contact store. We are going to extend it from the component store with the type of contact state. Great. In component store, you can initialize your state with a constructor. So we'll define a constructor and use the super method to specify our initial values. In our case, we'll shift the contacts that we have in our main component here. Now we'll go in our main component and get our contacts from there. Copy and paste it here. Great. So we have our data in our store now. But how do you get that data to your component? We can define a selector. If you're familiar with Redux, you'll realize it's the same concept. So let's define a contacts selector here. This will be an observable. So we are going to say observable. And we give the type of an array of contact. We'll use the this.select function in the store where we have the state passed in and we can return whatever part of it we want. In our case, 
it will be state dot contacts great so let's then switch over to the store in our component now component store is meant to be used with a component in its state but since we want to use it as a global store we'll just bind it to the app component since that will mean it will be available to all components inside of it so let's go ahead and specify our contact store in the providers array for this app component providers and we'll give the contact store at this point we can access the store anywhere in our app so let's first remove our existing data variables quickly. Then we create, I uh, will also uh, comment these out. Then we'll create a new variable, which will be an observable. And we can first then obviously have to include our contact store. And we can assign it to the contact store selector that we created. Lastly, let's just update our inputs to the contacts list. Since this is an observable, we are going to use the async operator, which will subscribe and unsubscribe to it automatically. Great. So it's time to test this out now. So as we can see, the data appears fine and we're using the store now. Okay, so what's left now is our app functions. Let's see how we can use the store for each of them. First, the search. So as you can see, we send an event back to the app component with the search term entered. Since we don't have the data there now, we can instead send the search string to the store. For that, let's add the search string to the contact state. So we'll go in our store and we can add the search string, which would be a string and uh, then we'll also have to give an initial value to it. So we'll give an initial value of an empty string. Then we can create a new selector called filtered contacts. This returns the contacts, but filtered with the search string. So we already have that logic in our component and we'll copy it from there. copy the contact here we are going to destructure the state object here which is always a good practice and makes things clearer we're going to replace term with search string great now all we have to do when the user enters the text is to update the search string in the state and the data should be automatically updated nice isn't it now we can remove the search contacts and we can remove this reference to the event handler as well because we don't need it. And we go into the header component now. Let's change the event uh, emitter to a normal handler called search contacts. And we'll define a handler here and we'll include our contact store above and we will just call uh, the contact store patch state method, passing in the search string. Now component store provides multiple ways to update the state in your store. There is set state, but that will replace the whole state with a new value. If you just need to update a part of the state, patch state is a good way to do this. Now all we have to do is to change our contacts to refer to the filtered contacts instead and it should all work. Let's do that. We go in app component and we're going to replace this with filtered contacts. Great, let's test this out. Yay, it works. And uh, all of it we have contained in our selector instead of the component. Next, let's see how to use the store for the add contact functionality. So for add contacts, we'll be adding a contact to the contacts data. Instead of the event, let's just add a handler here as before. We can then use path state as before, but let's see something different. Component store also provides another way to update the state that is to create an updater. 
If you are from a Redux background, this is similar to a reducer. Basically, it's a function which updates the state and exactly how that is done is a part of the store itself, which means the business logic will be encapsulated there instead of our component. So let's create an updater in our store called add contact. We'll call it add contact. This will be the up updater function. And it will take in the current state and our argument, which would be our new contact. It should then return the new state immutably, that is in a different object. Here we'll use a spread operator to first specify the previous state. And then we'll define a new contacts, which will have the new contact uh, at the top of the array and then the previous list of contacts before it. We just have to change the type here to resolve the TypeScript error. Then all we have to do is to call this updater in our header component. Let's go in our header and we'll copy in the dialog code and we'll just remove all of this, uh, include the add contact component, add the dialog service as well, because that's missing in our component. And then we'll, we're just going to simply call the updater here, contact store dot add contact. We're going to pass in our new contact here. So you'll notice it is a lot like uh, just calling a new function. Testing it out, let's see, we add a name to it, we add a number to it, and we click add, yes, we can add our contact now through the store. Now we can continue like this for the delete function as well. I'm going to skip it here because you already get the idea. Let's jump to the completed app and see how it looks as compared to the original app. So as you can see now, the delete has also been added and it has uh, some uh, business logic to it. You'll notice two things in our new app. One, that there are no event emitters required now since we can call the global store for any functionality. As I said before as well, this makes the app cleaner, especially as it gets larger. Second, you'll also notice that the components are now basically devoid of any business logic. In fact, components are used to do what they do best, that is display the UI. The business logic is now contained in our store. So as you can, uh, as you see the app component, it's empty. There is no business logic here. All of our business logic now is stored in one central location called the contact store. So you have your add contact and how it's been added, delete contact and how the filtered contacts are being shown, what filtration is being uh, applied on them. So all of this uh, makes it easier to change it in the future. And this makes testing a lot easier as well. So there you have it, a simple state management solution for simple to moderate sized Angular apps. Do try it out and give me a shout out if you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you like this video, do subscribe for more as I'll be covering the concept of effects in components so in a future video. Thanks for watching.